So today is a little bit different. I'm not really going to give you vocabulary or phrases or funny story. Today is more just me talking about the Danish language and um, the process of learning. When we're talking about grammar, you know, there are some other approaches that come to mind because you can look at a sentence and you can analyze it grammatically or you can just memorize it. Like a lot of you, you're watching these basic videos, you know, 150 basic phrases or phrases about uh, animals or music or whatever like you like that and i know you like it because i can see it on the view count and i know that youtube is recommending that right so like it's very popular to be learning phrases because it's sort of easy well quote unquote easy because uh, phrases learning phrases is fine but you don't really learn the structure a lot of the time if you're just copying right like, it's good to know the grammar, because when you see the grammar, you're like, oh, okay, there's a reason why the sentence is this way. It's not just some uh, coincidence or accident, like, there's a rhythm here, right? And you need that rhythm when you are learning. Like if you're just like a like a tourist, if you just came to Denmark, you know, want to check it out, it's, don't worry about it, eh? Like, grammar, maybe not the most important thing in the beginning. But at some point, you want to learn at least some and some of you might be scared, you know, what is that term, gramophobe, and like some, some people are just like, oh no, hell no, I'm not doing that, uh, I mean, I get that, you know, when I was like a teenager, I hated that, you know, like English grammar, or German grammar, and later on Japanese grammar, I'm just like, no, 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 I don't want to learn it, but it is pretty good, and so, a learning grammar can help you, it's not the only tool, it's not the only aspect, but it can help you, I would say that if you're relying on memorizing phrases, mm, you can you can get to a decent level, like at least some some basic level. You can say some stuff, have some little conversation, but you won't really be able to make your own sentences because everything is like, well, what have I memorized? Instead of making your own sentences, right? So it's kind of like that. Now, of course, you can combine it. I right? think some teachers they will say that. You have to do this, I have to do that. I think it's either or, but I'm more like it's both and. Right? You can do both. You can sort of alternate and switch between them. Grammar is cool. Well, it can be a pain in the ass, but it's also cool right? because it gives you an overview of the language. That's the thing. Right? It's like a sentence structure. You get an idea of the word order, how uh, the words are structured in a sentence. Because if you don't have that, if you don't have any understanding, then uh, <laughs> it might become some um, something very messy. Right? Like it's just sort of random where you put the words and and that can be very tricky. Uh, it can be tricky for a learner to find out and to guess. And it can also be uh, tricky for uh, well, a native Danish speaker to understand you. Because they, they're just like, well, what are you trying to say? Right? So that's why you gotta know the sentence structure and take some time, you know. It's something about looking at sentences and repeating them and making your own. So sort of having a lot of phrases and sentences in your memory that helps to see the structure. And then when you're also studying grammar, like the rules in a more uh, dry way, academic, whatever you wanna call it, like you're in school and they're explaining the theory to you, then that can help you to put it into context. Because that's basically what grammar does. Like, grammar helps you make sense of the language. If you don't have the grammar, you're sort of like, well, everything is connected, but I don't know how, and I don't know why. Right? So, like, grammar is like the glue. Sort of holds the language together, or the words together. Or you can just talk like a drunk person and not care, but <laughs> not. let's be serious, you, you want to know some of it. Then, of course, there's the whole thing of, I could just memorize something and... I don't have to learn the rules. And yeah, I mean, you can do that. I mean, that's what I did with English when I was a teenager. And it was fine because I had many years to do that. You know, so I was like watching The Simpsons or whatever. And I just sort of passively absorbed all of that. And that was fine because I was no rush. But if you're in Denmark, you know, I'm going to assume that you're already in your uh, early, mid or late 20s or maybe even older. So... You don't have like um, 10 years where you can just, you know, learn a little bit every day and absorb it that way. You want to speed it up a little bit, eh? Because memorizing takes time. 
for most people. Now, some of you, you're just straight up gangsters. Like, you're so, you're so good at that. And I think I've had some students that are like, yep, I remembered. I memorized it. I'm that good. Right? Well, they don't say the latter part. They're humble. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, there are people who are good at it. Like, if your brain is wired that way, then sure, go ahead. But for most people, that doesn't really work. So, grammar is the shortcut right? that you use to make sense of the language. All right. That is sort of the headline here. It's the third time I'm saying it. Grammar is a shortcut. It helps you to make sense of the language. Right? So you have like a verb conjugation, for example. Now, if you just have a random verb in Danish, it doesn't matter which one it is, then it's good to know how to conjugate. Okay, so is this the present tense or the past tense? Is this the infinitive? Is the imperative? If you know that, then you can structure sentences more correctly. Right? Because if you don't know it, then maybe you just end up speaking in present tense the whole time, or infinitive the whole time, or something else. Like everything becomes very scattered and unfocused. So it's very good to know how it works. Right? Like we have different categories of uh, verbs. We have a lot that end with ede in the past, and like dancer, hinder, lever, and then we have some that end with te, like uh, spiste or kørte. And then we have the irregular ones, saying like uh, geek, so, gyoa, and that's just annoying. But nonetheless, it really helps because you can copy it, right? When you don't know the rules for um, conjugating verbs, you sort of have to do from scratch every time, or you just have to guess. And sometimes you'll be right, but a lot of time, you know, you'll be wrong. Uh, so why not make it easier for yourself, right? And I made some videos about that. Uh, more than one. <laughs> Being aware of all this verb conjugation, it really, really helps you. Because then you have a clue, then you have something to go by. Something else that's very useful is word classes. Now, word classes is, as you probably know, whether it's a noun or a verb or an adverb or an adjective, preposition and so on, right? And the reason why this is important is you don't want to be saying the wrong word class. Like, like uh, elske is to love, but kærlighed is love as a concept. Or oplevelse is experience and experience, but at oplevelse is to experience. So you have to be aware of what word class you're dealing with. Otherwise, might be some pretty strange sentences, right? So it really helps you when you're aware of the word classes. Again, it's a shortcut. It doesn't mean it's a magic pill. Like, I don't believe in that. But it does make it a little bit easier when you know what word class you're dealing with. Sometimes with my students, I ask them, like, do you know what an adverb is or how to tell if it's a verb or something else? And some of them do and some of them don't. And I'm like, well, okay. That's okay because in your own language you never had to learn it, and like it was just automatic. You're, you're a kid or a baby, and you just kind of picked up uh, the language, and, and that was it. But now you're learning Danish, right? You are learning as an adult, so you want to use your, your intellect, for lack of a better term, to guide yourself, right? And uh, it can really speed up the process. It's still going to take time, but you can make it happen faster by knowing the different word classes. You don't have to love the grammar. Or the idea of word classes, but just be aware. All right? Gender. Now, it's not masculine and feminine in Danish, but it's in or it. Right? So, basically, for grammatical purposes, let's just say that's gender. That also helps if you know it's uh, it, who's in a house, but it's in men, a man, then you know it's who said or who said, and not who son. Right? And it's mannen, not mannet. Something very basic like that. It also informs the adjective. Right? In show film, like a funny movie, not in show. Because it would be it showed. Now, you know this already because I talked about it in adjectives. Like there's two videos about that at least. But it's something you want to keep in mind. Right? And when you know the gender, you can sort of save time. You don't have to you know, go back like all the time like, oh, what is it, what is it? can really make it a lot easier for yourself. So that's awesome, knowing that. And also just something like, now that we're talking about nouns, uh, if it's the singular or the plural, 
Nej. Like it's en cat. Cat. And then it's cat. But other uh, nouns have E-I in the plural. So that's, <laughs> that's a bit annoying. But being aware of how you end it in the plural versus the, um, the singular. Right? When there's one or when there's more. It can also really help. So you don't accidentally put an S, like in English or Spanish, like glasses or something. Because we don't do that. And we have our own rules.